Hello friends, this video on human health and diseases part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us try to understand what are antibodies and antigens because they are closely related terms and uh, we cannot understand the concept of immune system until and unless we know what are antibodies and antigens. So let us first discuss antibodies. So antibodies are large wide shaped protein structures. So basically they are all proteins, they, just that they have a specific structure. So each antibody molecule will have a specific structure because of which they will be able to bind to the pathogens and that is how they will be able to destroy it or fight against them. So let us try to understand. So the Y shaped structure, that is what we have to focus in. This is how the antibody looks like. So here you can see this is in the shape of Y. Right. So what is it? It recognize and neutralize pathogens. Now pathogens are the disease causing organisms. Now here you can see something called as antigens. Now what are antigens? Antigens, pathogens are a type of antigen you can say. So antigen is any foreign substance that can attack the body, that can cause uh, diseases in the body. They are all called antigens. So pathogen is just one example of, uh, of antigen. So here if you see this ant antibody will have antigen binding sites. So here you can see the antigen binding site. So these are the sites where the antigen can bind to the antibody. Now once the antibody binds to the antigen, it causes changes in the antigen and prevents it from causing diseases in our body. So each antibody will bind to a specific antigen. It is not that any antibody can bind to any specific antigen. It is not like that. And there is a reason behind it because you see it has an antigen binding site. So whichever antigen will actually match this binding site, only that antigen can will be able to bind to this antibody. So one antibody will bind to a specific antigen. Now let us look at the structure of the antibody molecule, this Y-shaped structure. It is made up of four peptide chains. Now we all know proteins are made up of the peptide chains, the polypeptides are proteins. So here what are the four chains? This is one chain, this is second chain, third chain and fourth chain. So these are the four chains. So out of these four, two are light chains and two are heavy chains. So when we say light chains, we mean the smaller one. So this is a light chain, this is a light chain, this one is a heavy chain and again this one is another heavy chain. So there are two light chains which are relatively smaller and there are two heavy chains which are relatively larger than the uh, smaller chains. Now an antibody molecule is represented as H2L2 that means two heavy chains and two light chains that is H2L2 that is how it is represented. Now why do we have representation for all such things? Just to keep things simple so that representation becomes simple so that every time you do not have to write down the structure or then draw the structure of antibody. So whenever you say H2L2 that means it is a Y-shaped protein structure that is antibody. Now there are various examples of antibodies because as I said it is not just one antibody which can bind to all the antigens. There, there are many different types of antibodies. So here you can see IgA where Ig stands for immunoglobulin. Immuno that is related to the immune system, globulin that is globular protein. So immunoglobulin A, Ig, A, Ig, M, Ig, G, Ig, E. These are all examples of various antibodies. So if you look at IgA, IgA, this is a dimer. So here you can see it is like two Y-shaped structure. This is one Y-shaped structure. This is another Y-shaped structure. So it is a dimer. If you look at IgM, this is how IgM looks like. So IgM is a pentamer. That means there are five Y-shaped structure. One, two, three, four and five. So there are five Y-shaped structures. So it is a pentamer. Now there are many monomers as well. For example, IgG and IgE. These are monomers. So they have structures like this where they just have one Y-shaped structure. So this is how different antibodies will have different structure and each of these antibodies will be able to bind to specific antigens. Now you might be curious to know what are antigens. So let us see what are antigens. 
the antigen refers to any foreign substance inside the body anything foreign now not necessarily they have to be microorganism they can be anything else as well they can be non living objects as well so anything foreign which is inside the body is referred to as antigens so it can be chemicals it can be microorganisms like bacteria or virus and for these microorganisms which can cause diseases we give the name pathogens that is why i told that pathogen is just one example of antigen it can be toxins any toxic or harmful materials pollen in fact many people if pollen enter inside their body it causes the allergy in them so they suffer from an, a, a problem so all these are antigens because they are all foreign substances which might enter into inside our body antigens trigger immune system to produce antibodies now whenever the body in encounters antigens only then antibodies are produced so that is how it is you remember same the same example of the house security guard and the thief the security guard will will just not start fighting when there is no thief so only when a thief is encountered the security guard will start fighting to protect the house from the thief so in a very similar way antibodies are not just produced by the body just like that so antibodies are produced only when the body encounters antigens and who produces antibodies as we saw just now the lymphocytes the b lymphocytes produce antibodies and they will be produced only when antigens are encountered now when antigens are encountered antibodies are produced so antibodies will bind with antigens and that is how it will destroy the antigens so let us now talk about now that we have understood what are antibodies and antigens so it will be easier to understand b cells and t cells that is b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes so now we will see what exactly these two types of cells do so let us first talk about b lymphocytes as i mentioned these b lymphocytes they will produce antibodies now these b lymphocytes are again of two types that is plasma b cells and memory b cells so these are the two types of b lymphocytes so the b cells are also of two types so the plasma b cells are the one which primarily produce the antibodies to destroy the antigens now we know how antibodies will destroy antigens by binding with them and where will it bind at the antigen binding site so one specific antibody will bind to one specific antigen so that is how the antigens will get destroyed but at the same time you remember the concept of acquired immunity which works on memory based that means once an antigen has attacked the body so that antigen should be remembered so that next time when the same antigen attacks the immune system should fight back with a stronger force with high intensity so for that purpose there has to be certain cells which will store these things in their memory so for that purpose are present the memory b cells so what will these do these memory b cells are specific to a particular antigen so there will be memory b cells specific to each antigen so that whenever that particular antigen comes back the memory b cell will inform the plasma b cells which antibodies to be produced and in what extent so these memory b cells are long lived cells that is they will live for a longer time they respond very fast on second encounter of the same specific antigen in fact that is their purpose that is why they are there so when an antigen attacks for the first time the plasma b cells will produce antibodies and the antibodies will destroy the antigens now since the attack is for the first time it is not very sure if the plasma b cells will produce antibodies strong enough to destroy the antigens we are not very sure that is why many people often suffer from diseases like uh, uh, chicken pox and all because the first time it attacks the body is not able to provide enough immunity but when the same antigen attacks for the second time what happens the memory b cells remember that particular antigen so memory b cell will respond very fast on the second counter and also the intensity of response that is the secondary response is going to be of high intensity so this time the most of the chances the fairly the chances are that the antigen will not be successful in its attack and that is why the body will not get infected with the disease so these this is the function of the b lymphocytes or the b cells 
Now let us look at the T lymphocyte. Now as I said, they do not produce antibodies, but they stimulate the B cells to produce antibodies. So they activate the B cells so that they can produce antibodies. So these T cells, they as such, they do not recognize the free floating antigen. So they will not be able to recognize antigen. But they contain some specialized antibody-like receptors which can see fragments of antigens that are present on the surface of the infected cells. For example, some cells are, say, cancerous cells. So it can recognize those antigens which are present on those infected cells. So these T cells will then stimulate the B cells and it will also stimulate the other T cells so that it, they can produce antibodies. Now these type of T cells, the one specific type of T cells are often known as helper T cells which are abbreviated as TH that is helper T cells. So their job is only to help the B cells and also other T cells to become activated. So they stimulate B cells to produce antibodies and they also activate the other T cells to do their job. So that is how the helper T cells perform their function. But these T lymphocytes are equally important as B lymphocytes because as B lymphocytes are required to produce antibodies and to remember the antigen in memory in a very similar way if T lymphocytes are not there then the B lymphocytes will not be stimulated to perform its activities. Therefore T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes are equally important for the immune response of the body. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.